All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you why I would still recommend 1440p resolution for the GTX 1080 Ti, even in 2024. Now, just a disclaimer, this would include upscaling FSR, because DLSS is not supported, obviously, and also we'll be using FSR 3 frame generation. Now, FSR 3 frame generation does introduce additional latency, does add additional latency. It can be somewhat mitigated in games that support uh, NVIDIA Reflex. Not all games do, but uh, the ones that do, you can definitely enable it and your latency will see a bit of a reduction and it will feel, feel better. Now, just the... I don't know what that is. Uh, the Justin, uh, just to give you an idea, we're at 1080p on the medium preset here with FSR set to quality and frame generation enabled. And you can see we're getting around 100 frames per second here, right? I'm not going to be recording the the metrics just yet. I just want to give you an idea, getting 100, 120 frames per second, depending on where we look. And unfortunately, at 1080p with FSR set to quality, the the image looks very over sharpened. This is a problem with The Last of Us, even with DLSS. It does uh, come across as very over sharpened, but um, the image quality with the 1080p, even set to FSR quality, uh, it's, it's not ideal. The, the image quality does look kind of blurry, kind of fuzzy. Anyway, enough talking. So let's just go ahead and enable 1440p. Yeah? All right, so we're now at 1440p. We've got uh, FSR3 super resolution set to quality once again, and we also have frame generation enabled, and uh, we are on the medium preset, right? So let's uh, start our benchmark run here. You see, we dropped from around 110 frames per second this specific area down to 91. It's uh, perfectly playable, especially for this type of game. We are sitting with around 5.2 gigabytes of VRAM used, and uh, you are pretty much guaranteed a, an above 60 frames per second experience here. Now, getting a final output of 60 frames per second with uh, frame generation enabled, any kind of frame generation just is not ideal. The input latency does become a bit of an issue. But once you hit 90 frames per second, uh, give or take, it does feel very, very good, actually. Especially in this game, especially if you play it with a controller, you'll probably not even notice the additional latency. And you can see we are getting a, a pretty decent experience here. Uh, if, even if I uh, whip out my gun here, it does feel very... I'm not going to say very responsive, it's, it feels responsive enough. But once again, the, the game does feel floaty even without frame generation, so this is perfectly fine. You can bump up the frame rate a bit by enabling FSR set to balanced. Uh, balanced the uh, upscaling at 1440p is still perfectly fine. And uh, to me personally, it looks better than uh, FSR quality at 1080p. So it's definitely something to consider. Medium preset uh, just with FSR set to quality and FSR frame generation enabled. And we are getting a pretty decent experience on a pretty old uh, GPU, seven years old at this stage. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, and here we have Remnant 2 also running at 1440p on the medium preset, FSR set to quality and FSR frame generation enabled, getting around 80 frames per second here this is my usual benchmark spot it is quite demanding due to all the foliage etc there's not a lot of enemies in this specific one purely because uh, i'm a wuss when it comes to souls likes i know this is not entirely souls like but it is kind of like a souls like with guns and uh, i'm not a, the biggest fan of the more difficult games anyway doesn't really matter fsr in this game does not look great uh, unfortunately with the GDX 1080 Ti you don't have any other option except for XCSS but then you can't use uh, FSR 3 frame generation anyway. It does have some shimmering etc but this game recently received an update and it does uh, FSR 3 frame generation actually works very well in this game. Now once again if you want to bump up the frame rate slightly you can always enable FSR set to balanced. As I said earlier FSR balanced is uh, still perfectly fine at 1440p. I be very wary of enabling FSR performance or even DLSS performance at 1440p but it's uh, up to up to your whatever you like uh, if you are fine with uh, a slightly lower internal resolution at the uh, for additional performance then uh, I mean 
you are free to do whatever you want. Right, so this is uh, Remnant 2 running at 90 frames per second. We had a pretty decent load here. It's a very responsive game as well. All right, here we have Robocop, uh, Rogue City, sorry, Robocop, Rogue City. And uh, we're at 1440p once again on the medium preset FSR set quality, FSR frame generation enabled. And even for a first person shooter, this is actually not terrible at all. Now, I do know that uh, some people will not like the additional input latency that uh, frame generation brings. That's true for any frame generation, be it uh, NVIDIA, FSR uh, from AMD. Uh, it does uh, introduce uh, additional latency. I know XSS or Intel is actually working on uh, their frame generation tech as well. From what I've seen, they do have a solution for the input latency to make it not as noticeable. A lot of more details sh should actually come out because uh, at the moment, I don't think anything is confirmed. But what frame generation typically does is, uh, well, AMD's and uh, NVIDIA's frame generation is they actually take data from the previous frame and the next frame and then insert a, an interpolated uh, frame in between and uh, that accounts for the latency penalty right and uh, i can't <laughs> can't aim here uh, anyway so apparently intel is only taking data from the previous frame and not the next frame so image quality might not be as good but uh, input latency should be quite uh, heavily reduced that's my uh, understanding of it anyway Anyway, so here we are running at 100 frames per second. Our average error was actually 92 frames per second. Perfectly uh, playable experience, even with the frame generation enabled. Now, I just want to add another disclaimer. Obviously, if you don't have uh, a game with the FSR frame generation, this won't be possible. But more and more games are actually coming out that do support uh, FSR frame generation. And uh, it's actually very nice to see. Now, FSR does have some issues image quality issues as i alluded to earlier i don't know if you noticed that earlier the the shadows just on these pillars like just uh, have a look there where my crosshair is it's not ideal <laughs> so you you do sacrifice a little bit of image quality uh, for a higher frame rate and uh, you also sacrifice a bit of input um, latency or responsiveness uh, Ultimately, it's up to you. Do you want a higher frame rate, uh, a more fluid uh, experience when it comes to more visually fluid experience, I should say, or do you just uh, play at 60 frames per second with uh, a little bit more uh, responsiveness? Anyway, I do prefer frame generation, although I'd ideally want a slightly higher frame rate than this in a first person shooter. This is still perfectly playable to someone like me anyway. As you can see, I'm a, I'm a pretty faulty casual. All right, so uh, that's going to be it for Robocop. Let's move on to the next one. All right, and our second last game is Grey Zone Warfare. Don't, <laughs> don't mind the rubber banding. Gosh, this game is uh, broken at times. Uh, the rubber banding is terrible. Yeah, we are running at 1440p once again with FSR, but this time it's set balanced and... Uh, frame generation is enabled again and unfortunately that's the only way i could get this gpu to run at above 60 frames per second at all times once again the input latency is actually not too bad you'd expect it to be worse than it is and such a, some people would maybe notice it a lot more than others but it's also kind of slow paced although accuracy does matter in this game uh, if you want to bring down enemies quite quickly and uh, the input latency might hamper you from from being as accurate as you can right this is kind of annoying not even kind of annoying this is terribly annoying it was actually better at the end of last week but now it's just uh, the the rubber banding is just horrible anyway so like it, it really does feel okay but once again each to their own if you don't like the the input latency at 75 frames per second that's perfectly fine i personally would struggle playing like this but i struggle playing at uh, a very low latency anyway so uh, that's just me anyway so getting around uh, 73 frames per second on average and not around that's what we got and our one percent lows are pretty respectable at 62 and uh, definitely not uh, not a bad experience but maybe something that you need to get accustomed to all right and lastly we've got a star field this is in one of the main cities here it's actually proto demanding as well with uh, 
1440p resolution, and the medium preset, FSR set to quality, and uh, frame generation enabled here. And we are still getting above uh, 70 frames per second here at all times. It's uh, once again probably not ideal. You'd want, uh, or I personally would want like 90 frames per second at least when frame generation is enabled. But once again, this game does support NVIDIA Reflex, which you can enable with the uh, FSR 3 frame generation. And the input latency is is definitely not an issue uh, for someone like me anyway. As I said, your mileage may vary and it's up to each person what they like. But this is actually a pretty good experience as well. Uh, around 80 frames per second, not too terrible on a seven year old GPU. And Starfield is actually quite demanding as well. Despite the, the visuals not being the best like it, you'd expect the game to run a little bit better uh, judging by the way it looks but uh, it is what it is unfortunately it, it has come quite a, a long way since launch uh, it's definitely much better now especially on nvidia gpus but one thing i don't know if you noticed in the previous uh, two games our gpu power was around 250 watt and now it's down to like 180 190 watt um power usage in this game is still not ideal for some reason and uh, that could contribute to uh, the low performance we're seeing here right but still 70 frames per second with the fsr frame generation enabled definitely not terrible i'm moving the mouse quite a bit around just to get a feel for the game obviously i did test it before i made this video and it actually feels quite okay in closed off areas the frame rate will jump considerably you can probably even look at uh, doubling your frame rate in certain areas and then it will just be a very very fluid experience all right i think that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one